Molly. Yes, McGee? What night is this? Tuesday. Well, turn the radio on quick. I want to hear Fred Waring. Yes, but dearie, Fred Waring. Come on, come on. It's almost time. He's on for Johnson's Wax. Well, music and someone... Well, what are you staring at me for? The summer's over. Fred Waring is not on for Johnson's Wax now. He isn't? Who is? We are. Huh? Woo! The Johnson Wax Program with Fred McGee and Molly. <laughs> years with Fibber McGee and Molly, I've become kind of used to wax. But you know, even today, it always seems to me there's a touch of magic in the way wax turns an everyday object into a thing of surprising beauty. Take one of your tables, say. Rub a little Johnson's paste wax on it, polish it lightly, and right before your eyes, that table becomes a shining, richly polished treasure. The whole surface glows brightly, and the grain of the wood is clear and lovely. All through your home, you'll find that Johnson's wax performs similar miracles. In every room, wax-polished floors take on a mellow sheen that adds enormously to their appearance. Johnson's Wax does wonders for your furniture, too, and greatly enriches the looks of things like windowsills, bookends, and leather articles. And think what a great comfort it is to you to know that Johnson's Wax is constantly on duty to guard against dirt, wear, and spill things. I hope you'll use it regularly. You'll be really pleased if you do. Johnson's Wax, paste, liquid, or cream. When some men are sick, they just want to crawl into a corner and be left alone. The other 99 out of 100 want to be babied, nursed, coddled, pampered, and spoon-fed. Out of the grab bag of matrimony, Mrs. McGee of 79 Westville Vista had to snag one of the latter kind. You'll see what we mean as we meet... Fibber McGee and Molly! Imagine me being took sick like this when there's so many things to be done, like taking down the screens. Now, don't you worry about the screens, sweetheart. We'll wait till you get well. Yeah, but maybe this is a lingering illness. Maybe, maybe, maybe better hire somebody else to take them down. <laughs> Nonsense. I won't have anybody clattering around here while you're not well. Glass of water, Pat? No. No, thanks. Light me a cigar, will you? <laughs> I ain't got the strength to strike a match. No, no cigars. Not if I have to light them. It'd be silly for both of us to be sick. Besides, Dr. Gamble is on his way over, and he'd be very annoyed to be found you smoking a cigar. I'll stick it under the pillow when he comes. You haven't enough fever to account for all the smoke. No, I hardly think that... Oh, that must be the doctor now, Molly. You better start boiling some water. What for? Oh, I don't know. That's the first thing the doctor always asks for. <laughs> hot water and clean towels. They always gotta have hot water. Oh, dear. Come in. Hello, Dr. Gamble. Come right in. Hello, Molly. What's the matter with little Caesar? Swallow his bubble gum? <laughs> Hi, Doctor. Good of you to come. Uh, would you like me to heat some water, Doctor? Yes, please, my dear. And put some coffee in it. <laughs> now then, my boy, tell me about yourself. Okay, Doctor. I was born in a little white house on top of Kickapoo Hill. <laughs> Back in Peoria, a poor but honest parent. Oh, stop it. I don't want your history. I want your symptoms. Never mind. When did you start feeling like this? Just a few nights ago, Doctor. He just started to turn green like Christmas jewelry. Have you eaten anything unusual, McGee? I mean, aside from your usual eccentric menu of chili con carne, malted milks, and chocolate donuts? <laughs> nope. Just a cigar's off. A cigar? He ate a cigar? Well, technically, I wouldn't say I ate it, Doc. I swallowed it. <laughs> one of your regular brands? Yes, it was, Doctor. I see. Swallowed one of his own cigars and lived several days. <laughs> you don't need me, McGee. You want Robert Ripley. Tell me, Wonder Man, what was the occasion for this Panatella picnic? Well, uh, we were listening to the Lewis Moriella prize fight, Doctor. Yeah. And when Moriella come to the microphone afterwards and made his speech, I... I... <laughs> well, I gulped my butt. <laughs> you know, uh, 
Doctor, I was so fascinated by McGee's expression, I never did hear what Mr. Moriella said. Lucky girl. I am happy to report, my boy, that you have the whole healthy pulse of a brewery horse. <laughs> but I don't like your color. Well, if you don't like it now, you should have seen it the night he swallowed the cigar. He was about the color of a bookkeeper's eye shade. I like to have seen that. Here, these will fix you up. Ooh, pills. What are they, Doctor? These, my dear, are placebos. I give them to very few people, then only in unusual circumstances. What, 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 what did you say they were, Doc? Placebos. Mm-hmm. Take one every half hour with water or milk. Every half hour, mind you. On the dot. Yes. Not every 29 minutes or 32 minutes, but on the half hour. Understand? I'll see to it, Doctor. I'll set the alarm clock here. Fine. Call me if he should develop any strange complications, such as wanting to get up and do some work. <laughs> I'll be at the hospital in the operating room. Oh, in the operating room? You got a serious case in hand, Doc? No, but with the meat shortage, it's the only carving I have a chance to do these days. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, my, my. Isn't he a sweet old character? Mm. Here, I'll set this alarm clock for you, and as soon as it rings, you can start taking your pills. Hey, I better take one right now. They look good. <laughs> Give me the clock. I'll set it for right now. Well, here, but I don't see what... <clears throat> Give me the pill, quick. <sighs> well, I'll set it for another half hour. Is there anything else you want, dearie? Yes. Yeah. What? Light me a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> King's men sing, doing what comes naturally. Folks are dumb where I come from. They ain't had any learning. Still, they're happy as can be, doing what comes naturally. Folks like us could never fuss with schools and books and learning. Still, we've gone from A to Z, doing what comes naturally. Concentrated essence of plain grass. Grass? Yep. What's one of the strongest animals? A horse. And what does a horse eat? Grass. What animal is always calm, never nervous? A cow. What does a cow eat? Grass. Look at a dog. Intelligent animal. When a dog feels sick, what does he do? Goes out and eats some grass. 
How about it? Wonderful idea. Betcha. Three spoonfuls of that and you can pull a wagon, chase automobiles, and sell your hide to a tannery. No, I'm serious, Molly. I think that... Hey, is that alarm clock running? Yes, yes, yes. Calm yourself. I'll see that you... Oh, look who's coming, McGee. Hmm? The girl from the beauty parlor. I wonder what she wants. You could run upstairs, dearie, if you don't feel like talking. No, no, I'll, I'll stay. Must my hair up a little. I, I want to look restless. Thanks. Come in. It's just I, Mrs. McGee, Elsie Merkel from the Wistful Vista Saloon of Beauty. Oh, heavenly days. Do come in, Elsie. This is my husband. McGee, this is Miss Merkel from the beauty parlor. How'd you do, Miss Merkel? Very pleased to meet your acquaintance, I'm sure. Any husband of Mrs. McGee's is a friend of mine, I always say. <laughs> But the reason why I come over, Mrs. McGee, was you left your compact in the shop yesterday, so I brung it over. Because a girl without a compact is like a ship without a udder. I think you mean rudder, Elsie. Not necessarily. I was on a cattle boat. Never mind. Oh, well, Elsie, I really appreciate you taking the trouble to bring back my compact. Oh, it was a distinct pleasure, Mrs. McGee. I wanted to take... Hey, my pill, Molly. A placebo. Quick, hand me the water. Ah. Right on the dock, McGee. Now I'll set the clock for another half hour. Gee, does a minute make so much difference taking a pill, Mr. McGee? It does in my case, sis. The doctor says not 29 minutes after or 32 minutes after, but every half hour on the button. When you're taking placebos, you don't monkey around. Our doctor says he doesn't prescribe them very often, Elsie. I'm a special case. I'll probably be wrote up in the medical journals. Like that woman in Arkansas who had four children and a fox terrier. Great, you can't. He had four children and a fox terrier that used to sit by their cribs and rock them with his paw. <laughs> you gotta go now, sis. Uh, yes, thank you. My next client for a hand of rinse is Miss Cece Tremaine. And I and her always have so much to talk about. Like, for instance, what Gloria Gottlotz did when the fellow she married turned out to be a snuggler. Heavenly days, a smuggler? No, a snuggler. He was snuggling with the housemaid and the seamstress. <laughs> and what I know about that family would fill a book that would stop the circulation in a circulating library. <laughs> well, I hope you get well, Mr. McGee. Goodbye. She hopes I get well. That's a pretty thought. Do I look that bad, Molly? No, you don't look bad at all, dearie. And I must say, Dr. Gamble didn't seem very perturbed about you. Oh, no. He gave me the placebos, didn't he? And he don't give placebos to everybody. I'll bet I got some obscure disease that people don't know. Oh, folks are just passing by and... Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. Taking a little nap, pal? No, no. He's ill, Mr. Wilcox. I get dizzy spells, Junior. Yes, I know. You're looking good, Junior. Nice and tan. <laughs> Took a yachting trip on a fishing boat this summer, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, Lake Superior. Had a wonderful time. And the strangest thing happened one day... Catch a mermaid, Mr. Wilcox? <laughs> you know, if they're under 18, you have to throw them back. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I was on deck one day telling Jose... Ooh. Jose Ducharme, fellow that owns the boat. Oh, greatest fly fisherman who ever cut a hook out of his leg. Well, we, we were sitting on deck one day, and I was telling him all about Johnson's car and you. Oh, I just bet you were. We were talking about Johnson's car and you and how it's the tired car owner's friend because it beautifies a dingy car with so little effort. And uh, the strange thing that happened, Mr. Wilcox? Yeah, get with it, Waxy. Skip the part about how you just apply car new, let it dry and wipe it off for a showroom shine that you can see your happy little face in. <laughs> and we know how it cleans and polishes in one teensy-weensy application. Now, Goon... Read that again, dear. Huh? Oh, now go on. <laughs> <laughs> Words were kind of run together there. <laughs> well, a few minutes later, when they tried to raise the anchor, it was fouled on something. Mm -hmm. When we finally got it up, it was dragging a muddy, rusty, dripping old Maxwell. Heavenly days. Did it have a violin lying on the front seat? <laughs> <laughs> no, but quick as a flash, I turned to Jose and said, Now there is one of the few cars I ever saw that Johnson's car knew couldn't do much for. Well, goon, Waxy, get to the point. <laughs> Well, that's all, but I thought it was rather interesting that we should have just been talking about Carnew before this thing happened. Before this thing happened. Don't you see? It's rather a startling coincidence. That story, Mr. Wilcox, had all the dramatic impact of a ketchup label. 
I know a guy who carves tombstones that's looking for a scriptwriter, Junior. <laughs> I'll send you over. You tell about as dead an anecdote as I ever heard. Now, you're just envious because interesting things never happen to you, pal. Well, I'd better run along, kid. Anything I can do? Yes, Junior. What, pal? Run along. Okay, take care of yourself. <laughs> That guy can be duller than a dime store chisel. Hey, don't go away. Where are you going? I simply must go upstairs, dearie, and start the laundry. Mm. If you want anything, just pound on the wall or something. Mm. And if that alarm clock goes off, take the placebo quickly. Okay, but don't be gone long. I might have an eclipse. <laughs> the word is relapse, sweetheart. An eclipse is a term used in astronomy. And you don't have a heavenly body. <laughs> Just a cute one. <laughs> now, you be a good boy and take your pill when the bell rings. Okay. Ah, oh, there goes a good kid. And what a nurse. Only thing Florence Nightingale had that she hasn't got is a bustle. <laughs> if I wanted chili con carne and waffles for supper tonight, she'd cook them for me sick as I am. And sick as I am, that's what I want. <laughs> Bye, George, when she comes... Hey, Molly, there's somebody at the door. Hey, hey, Molly. Oh, well. Come in. Hi, mister. Oh, hello there, Teenie. <laughs> you better not get too close to me now. I'm, I'm a sick man. Okay. Say, I rode in an airplane this summer, mister. Oh, you did, eh? Hmm? I said you did, eh? Did what? You rode in an airplane this summer. I know it. <laughs> it was my uncle's airplane. We flew a million miles high, and he shut off the motor, and it started to glide, and we glid all the way home. <laughs> That's very interesting, sis, but you don't mean you glid. You glided all the way home. Oh, <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I don't know very much about airplanes. It was the first time I ever rided in one. Not rided, teeny, rode. It's the past tense of the subjunctive, taking the plural object in the participle. <laughs> See, is it really? Anyway, there were so many clouds, they hold the ground so we couldn't even see it, I bet you. Please, sis, not hold the ground, hid the ground. Pardon me. Hmm. But gee, mister, wasn't I ever excited when the airplane dipped? Oh, boy, it dipped fast. Dove, sis. Boy, it dove fast. Climbing in when we arrived home. Arrived? When we arrived home and drived up the driveway. Drove up the driveway! Sure. When we drove up the driveway, why we... Look, mister. Hmm? Are you going to be busy by January 15th? <laughs> January 15th is a long way off. Why'd you ask? I'm, I'm coming over and tell you a story, well, Mister. Well, fine. Be glad to hear it, Teenie. But why January 15th in particular? Because the way you butt in and interrupt and everything, it'll be an awful cold day when I tell you anything again. <laughs> Billy Mills in the orchestra, and I got the sun in the morning. Where's the water? Ah. Okay, Billy.
Feeling all right, McGee? Are the placebos helping any? My gosh, they're marvelous, Molly. Where Doc Gamble digs up these mysterious drugs, I'll never know. No, you won't either. I was going to ask him, but you never get any real information out of doctors. No, nurses either. If you ask a nurse what your temperature is, she gives you that toothy smile and says, Well, shall we have our sponge bath now? (laughs) That always embarrasses me. Shall we have our bath now? (laughs) Sounds like the municipal plunge. Well... You need anything? No, thanks. Just be sure the alarm clock is running. Don't want to miss my next pill time. Doc emphasized that I should always take... Come in. Well, for goodness sake, look... Hello there, daughter. Hi, Johnny. Hi, old-timer. Smart with you? Got the pip? I don't know what I got exactly, old-timer. Just sick, that's all. Got to take one of these pills every half hour on the dot. Not 29 minutes after. Or 32 minutes after. But right on the half hour. Shows you how potent this stuff is. Can't give it a minute either way. Well... Sure hurts me to see a fine, healthy boy like you laid up, Johnny. Personally, never had a sick day in my life. Really? Never a sick day? Never a sick day. But I've sure put in some horrible nights, kid. (laughs) Yep. Though since I moved to my new boarding house, I walk six miles before breakfast every morning. No kidding. Six miles before breakfast. Where do you go? Bathroom down the hall. Well, maybe it ain't exactly six miles, but doggone if it don't seem like it through them cold halls. <laughs> then after taking my ice cold shower, I... Heavenly do... days, old timer. You shouldn't take ice cold showers. It's too much of a shock. Daughter, it ain't half the shock it'd be if the dump ever had some hot water. <laughs> I guess most boarding houses are the same, old timer. I remember when I was in Vaudeville with my old partner, Fred Nittany from Star Rock, Illinois. We stayed in some pretty fantastic places, believe me. To this day, my right arm is two inches longer than my left. From reaching for the butter, dear? No, from pushing away the prunes. <laughs> That's good, Johnny, but that ain't the way I heard it. The way I heard it, one feller says, the telefeller says, says, think President Truman has got to run for re-election? Sure, says the feller. friend of mine in Washington just been called in for a conference. Jack so, says first feller. Politician? No, says Tully feller. Piano tuner. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get there. I was supposed to be two yeah. fellas up then. Uh, be good to yourself there, Johnny. Yeah. Come on. You know, dearie, if it's a nice day tomorrow, I think you should sit out on the front porch for a little while. Oh, quick. My placebo. The water. Hurry. <laughs> Well, the doctor certainly ought to be proud of the way you're following instructions. I'll say so. I popped them pills into my puss before that dad ratted sleep buster stopped playing. And you know what? No, what? Them pills are doing strange things to me. My beard is growing faster. <laughs> Look at it. I need a shave again already. <laughs> you mean already since yesterday morning? Oh, didn't I shave this morning? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. oh, besides that, my fever's gone down. My chest feels absolutely cool to the touch. Why not? You spilled half that glass of water on your (laughs) I did, or what do you know? Nevertheless, I got an instinctive feeling that them pills are working wonders. I got a terrific appetite. I could even... Fine sick room. Might as well be convalescing in Times Square. Come in. Well, McGee, look who's here. Mayor Latrivia. Good day, Molly. Don't get up, McGee. Don't worry, Your Honor. Oh, my goodness, you're all dressed up, aren't you? Gardenia, gloves, and everything. Making a campaign speech for trivia? No, no, McGee, I... Uh, well, since I saw you last, I've become... I've fallen in... Well, that is to say... <laughs> there is a woman. <laughs> well, spray me with DDT. I'm crawling with curiosity. Who's the lucky chick, Chuck? The lady is Miss Fifi Tremaine, an actress. Fifi Tremaine? Heavenly days. Isn't that the girl Dr. Gamble used to be so mad about? I believe Dr. Gamble is still interested in Miss Tremaine. Oh, brother. This situation is fraught with something. <laughs> Doc, know you're dating this babe, bud? Uh, we three have gone places together several times. Usually to some place where there's dancing, at my suggestion. 
I'm an excellent dancer. Ah. Dr. Gamble is not. But, never mind me. What seems to be the trouble with you, McGee? Oh, just a little upset or something, Mr. Mayor. Your rival in love was here a while ago to see him. Yeah, you know what he gave me, Latrib? Placebos. Placebo? Not really. You know what they are, Mr. Mayor? Yes, yes, I do. I think. Well, this is very interesting. You said it, kiddo. I got to take one every half hour. Not at 29 minutes. Not at 32 minutes. Every half hour on the nose. I got the alarm clock right here, so I won't miss him. Well, I have very great admiration for Dr. Gamble as a physician. And if he gave you placebos, I imagine that's exactly what your condition demands. And have you a dictionary? A dic- oh, sure, let One over your shoulder there on the bookshelf. Huh. Right between the Rover Boys in Southern Waters and How to Build 20 Sailboats. <laughs> we also have five little peppers and how they grew. But himself here is pressing some neckties in it. Did you get it, Mr. Mayor? Oh, yes, yes, I have it. Now, uh, let me see. E-L-A-C-E-B-O. Placebo, placebo. Ah, here it is. Hmm. Just as I thought. What is it, Mr. Mayor? Yeah, tell me, Latrib. My gosh. It may be something I'm paying a hundred bucks a gram for. What is it? What's it say? It says placebo. Yeah? A mixture or pill of no medicinal value... Given to satisfy a patient's whims. <laughs> Whim! Oh, my gosh! You hear that, Molly? I got the whim! Oh, oh my devil again! Quarantine the house! I got the whim! Has this ever happened to you? You're visiting a friend's house, and eventually you drift back into the kitchen, and there on the floor is the sort of linoleum surface you've always dreamed about. It has a beautifully smooth luster, free from dirt and stains, and its colors are bright and fresh. Ask your friend, and chances are she'll tell you the only thing she uses on that kitchen uh, kitchen floor is Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. When she spills something or dirt tracks in, she simply wipes the floor with a damp cloth, and right away it's beautiful again. What actually happens is that glow coat forms a tough, shining coat of wax, which keeps dirt and still things away from the surface of the floor, keeps it bright and new-looking years longer. Of course, Johnson's glow coat is easy to use. There's no rubbing or buffing. Twenty minutes after you've applied it, your linoleum and other floors are ready to walk on and beautifully wax polished. Try it, won't you? Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. You'll like it. Doc Gamble was just here again. And you know what he said? No, what did he say? He says, I got the worst case of whims he'd ever seen. Says I got them chronic. (laughs) Heavenly days, is he going to operate? I asked him that. He says it was a tempting idea, but we better try diet first. What kind of a diet? No moose meat. (laughs) Well, that I can arrange. Good. Good night. Good night, all. of Johnson's Wax Products for Home and Industry have brought you Fibber McGee and Molly with Bill Thompson, B. Benedaris, Arthur Q. Bryan, and Gail Gordon. The script was by Don Quinn and Phil Leslie. This is Harlow Wilcox inviting you to be with us again next Tuesday night. Good night. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.